So um, the results of the uh, Griffin trial have been reported in various meetings um, and actually published uh, in April of 2020. Uh, the initial analyses um, looked at the primary endpoint of the study, which was stringent complete response rate after those two cycles of consolidation therapy occurring in the aftermath of stem cell transplantation. And there was clear benefit uh, shown with the addition of daratumumab in terms of that primary endpoint. Uh, the stringent complete response rate following um, uh, two cycles of consolidation therapy in the aftermath of induction and transplant was 42% in patients who received uh, uh, daratumumab as part of their treatment versus 32% uh, in patients who did not. So in that regard, there was a statistically significant benefit uh, associated with the addition of daratumumab. A subsequent analysis looked at um, uh, outcomes after one year of maintenance therapy or after roughly two years of treatment, which continued to show the benefit uh, of uh, daratumumab. And this analysis was looking specifically at um, uh, outcomes um, uh, after uh, two years of maintenance therapy or approximately three years of treatment overall. And um, the results were quite impressive uh, in that the stringent complete response rate continued to improve and actually widen between the two arms. So the stringent complete response rate was 66% after two years of maintenance in daratumumab treated patients versus 47% uh, in the other uh, treatment arm. Uh, the rate of MRD negativity um, at the level of 10 to the minus fifth was 64% in patients who received daratumumab versus 30% in those that uh, did not. And then looking a little bit more deeply at that uh, MRD analysis, the study also included next generation sequencing with a higher level of MRD sensitivity at 10 to the minus sixth. And there, the difference was 36% MRD negativity in daratumumab-treated patients versus 15% in those um, uh, who did not receive uh, daratumumab. So very um, Im impressive results. Um, and I would also say that was what was striking to us as we looked at the data was that those rates of uh, MRD negativity even at the level of 10 to the minus sixth, continue to improve in that second year of maintenance therapy. So for example, um, in the patients in the daratumumab treated arm after one year of maintenance, the rate of MRD negativity after one year of maintenance was 19%. After two years, it had improved to 36%. So, um, and we were very uh, impressed with these results. We think it's really important for patients and it translated into a, um, a, a, a real trend towards improvement and progression-free survival at three years, where the difference was 89% progression-free survival amongst the daratumumab-treated patients versus 81% um, in those who did not receive uh, daratumumab. So those are really the highlights of uh, the results. I would also add that um, as has been shown in the previous reports, including the blood publication in 2020, the addition of uh, daratumumab to RVD um, uh, was well tolerated. It did not lead to a lot of excess uh, adverse events. Um, the only more frequent high-grade toxicities that were seen were uh, hematologic ones, higher rate of leukopenia, neutropenia, um, and anemia. But um, as far as other non-hematologic toxicities, uh, there was a higher rate overall of such toxicities, but the rates of high-grade serious toxicities were essentially equivalent across the two groups. And the discontinuation rate because of adverse events was essentially the same in the two arms.